Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Avram, and I've been playing video console for three years now. 2022 is a year of great changes in video. In this video, I'm going to discuss from the basics of farming to the positioning of farming in the current game status, and then what are the pros and cons of farming from a holistic game strategy perspective, and why eventually. I decided to quit farming. Now, whether you are a brand new player or have been playing for years, I believe that you will find this information useful. So stay tuned. To help you navigate the sections of this video easier, I've added the timestamps for the major parts. But I still highly encourage you to go through the journey with me together, as I will also mention many small tips along the video. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. So I'll know my video is helpful to the community, and this will also help me to grow my channel. All right, let's get started. Before we go into the basics of farming, let me just highlight here: farming is not a passive life skill. This is to address a very common false belief that farming is the best CP usage and easy money. Farming is a pure 100% active life skill. Same as gathering, but with a deferred return. So when we did my preparation for this video, I find many、uh, farming guys online they classified farming income as passive income, which is totally incorrect in my opinion. So I'll go over some basics of farming now and let you see why it is not passive. For new players watching this video, the first step in farming is to get yourself a fence by exchanging CP with NPCs. So you can simply search NPC with a keyword "fence." In the search results, you'll find different NPCs with various territories, offering fences from small plain to strong fence. And there is also a number next to each fence category. The number represents the CP cost for each fence category. For one small fence, it costs three CP, and will give you four farming slots. A plant fence costs six CP and will give you seven farming slots. And a strong fence costs ten CP for ten farming slots. There's no best fence in my opinion because the stronger the fence. The more farming slots you will have, but with a reduced CP efficiency. Though small fences give you the best CP efficiency for the most farming slots per CP, but if you attend four farming slots comparing to ten farming slots,、um, it is kind of like you are charged for more quality fee. The, the farming slots per travel time. Is lower than the stronger fence when you、uh, take care of ten farming slots in one go. Remember, you can only set up ten fences at maximum. Generally, if your CP is limited and you want to go casual farming, then small fence is the best choice here. If your goal is to get many farming products or level up farming fast, then Get ten strong fence, maybe better for you. Special mention here that you probably already noticed that I'm using old moon fence, and this is just a compact version of the strong fence. It requires farming level master one and costs ten CP for ten farming slots. Since the fence is more compact, the distance between the crops inside the fence is smaller. Than large fence, so if you stand in the middle of the fence to harvest or breed a crop, most time you won't need to move your characters. Just instead, you can turn your camera and interact with the next crop. So this maneuver saves you a bit of time in the long run. Now it naturally comes to a question: How to level up farming? You may have heard power leveling farming by planting your crop in a very wet area to keep blighting your crops 
and pulling or killing pets to get、uh, most farming EXP. In farming, pulling and killing pets indeed give you the highest EXP, but we are now in 2022. Financially, I don't recommend you do in this way. First, let's understand the benefits of higher level of farming. To see if you really need to level up farming before we answer how to level up. Farming is a life skill without life skill mastery. The higher your farming level, the more energy efficiency and activity speed you will get when you harvest, like seed breeding, pruning, and killing pests. All these all activities. Since we won't have more than a hundred farming slots, you know, in maximum, thus the energy cost usually is not very high, and the benefit of energy efficiency is not that much, in my opinion. As to the harvesting speeds, this is an important、uh, factor to increase your money per activity per active hour in farming. I'm not sure with guru farming, but at master master love farming, I have noticed the harvesting speed is much faster than the beginner level, for about two seconds faster. So, if your plan is to invest in farming, you may technically get back your initial time investment by reducing the harvesting time. With a low, with a higher、uh, farming level in the future, but this will need you to stay in farming in an extremely long time. Under the current game status, it is not difficult to get like 200 million grinding money per active hour at the moment. So if you choose to invest your time in power leveling farming instead of grinding or doing other things. You literally invested a large amount of opportunity cost, and I don't think you can recoup the opportunity cost practically. So, in addition, the master level farming harvesting speed is still lower than another life skill, which is gathering. So, since farming and gathering are very similar. Another question you should ask yourself before you know going to farming is if you should invest your time in farming or gathering. So we'll explore this question later in the video. Now, still for the farming leveling,、uh, my suggestion for you is to complete the farming guru quest line,、uh, which is a game guide quest. To get you a basic understanding, a basic knowledge of farming, and get some bonus farming EXP at the same time. There are two easy farming daily quests in Vilia as well from NPC、uh, Ablin near the storage keeper to give him a caterpillar from killing pests on your farm, and another NPC、uh, Adrian Logia. You can give him a tweak from pulling on your farm. So these two NPC will give you the quest, rewarding you with the farming EXP、uh, in a daily basis. At the same time, you can also farm at a hundred farming slots and use your worker to look after the farm for you. You can then just level up farming naturally by harvesting or seed breeding gradually. You will reach Arizon One Farming or Master One. Also, you don't need to connect the node for the worker. So for me, I didn't invest in a single node in Odraxia region, and just use the free worker to work on my farm. A quick mention here to other small benefits of leveling that you can. Get magic or yellow grades of farming seeds once you reach、uh, farming artisan one, and you can also use the old moon fence I mentioned previously after reaching farming master one. 
So now you have got an understanding of fan selection and farming level benefits. Let's take a look at farming harvesting yields. Depends on the grade of the seeds or mushroom hypha you planted. Generally, you can expect to harvest around 70 uh, products from white grade of seeds or 50 high grade green grade um, farming products or 30 special quality uh, which is in blue grade farming products on average. The exact quantity uh, mainly is affected by RNG special events like bird attack on your crops or groundwater supply. Generally, uh, as long as you didn't plant your crop in the desert or in a very dry spot, uh, you can see from the environment in a very extreme weather condition. So these numbers are the average for each farm seeds return. For example, if you planted like 100 white grade onion seeds, you probably will get 7,000 white grade onion back if you harvest, the, harvest them all. If you ask me what grade is the best choice to plant, I'll say depends on your purpose. If your purpose is to sell all farming products to the central market for profit, most of the time, special grade seeds will be the best choice for you. If you um, like, if your purpose is to use it for cooking, then the high quality grades will be the best choice in most cases. And white grade may also be good. This is because the number of farming products in high level, high quality, and white grades are higher than in uh, special quality. For example, if you only need one onion for your cooking recipe and if you don't consider buying and selling crops, uh, you should always farm in the white grade uh, seed. For other cooking recipe requiring like two white onions, then it is best to farm high quality grade onion. Is one high quality grade onion can usually substitute up to three white grade onions. So even if you only get like 50 high quality onion from one crop, equally that is a hundred white onion for this cooking recipe. So if a cooking recipe requires four or more uh, farming products, then special grades will be the best choice. But uh, generally, this recipe is rare. Uh, so um, most of the time, high grades and white quality, that should be enough. And this video will try to give you an holistic view of farming with a strategy to maximize your effort efficiency. So I'll later connect farming with cooking and alchemy to give you a deeper understanding in a strategic view. Now let's come back to crop yield. Special mention here for hot pepper and white grade Delotia. Hot pepper is the only plant that will take two farming slots for each seed. So even in a strong farming fence, you can only plant five hot peppers at maximum. But the yield of hot pepper is also doubled than other crops, giving you a same amount of final harvesting products. You may think that you know there's no difference than other crops then, but I'll tell you this makes a significant difference. You literally saved half of your active time in looking after hot peppers than other crops. Given the current high potential opportunity cost for your active time in 2022, uh, 
this hot pepper gives a absolute time efficiency advantage over other crops. Suppose you you know have the same need for them. The reason I also mentioned Delotia here is for our alchemy life skill players, Delotia is the source for the alchemy ingredient called Delotia powder. This is a strange material that the higher the quality, uh, the less powder it will generate after grinding it. If you grind white Delotia into powder, the ratio um, is like 1 Delotia to 1 or 0.5 Delotia powder, Some, but most of the time it's like 1 to 1 ratio. But high quality Delotia ratio is like 1 qual high quality to 0.8 Delotia powder. Special quality ratio is like 1 special Delotia to 0.5 Delotia powder. So, uh, this is the only plant, in my opinion, you should always farm in white quality. I didn't quite get the value of higher grade Delotia here. Uh, this game design actually confused me. So, if you happen to know more, please also leave your comments down below so we can build on it. For the harvesting yield, another two special mention here is about magic seed and mysterious seed. So these two are the yellow grade seeds and will yield special grade farming products when harvesting it. The magic seed is obtained by seed breeding in RNG after reaching Artisan 1 in farming. To my experience, this rate is about 3 to 5 percent. And the magic seed will take 5 farming slots and will also yield 5 times of the special grade seed. So, giving the same amount of total farming products, but saved your time, your active time in planting and harvesting 5 crops. For magic hot pepper seeds, it will take 10 farming slots. So you have to get one strong fence or the you know uh, old wooden fence in order to use it. The mysterious seed is a seed you can get from RNG when you do all kinds of uh, farming activities like pruning, killing pests, harvesting and seed breeding all can give you the mysterious seed but the drop rate in my opinion is very low I estimate is, is around like 0.3% unlike the magic seed or other seeds mysterious seed is a general type of seed uh, without specific crop type to use it, you'll need to shake one mysterious seed with a special grade seed. For example, you can shake it with one special onion seed. Then you can get one new seed, which is called mysterious onion seed. Then you can plant this mysterious onion seed into the fence, which will take five farming slots for seven times of the special grade crop yield. For mysterious hot pepper, that will take 10 farming slots. If you have 5 general mysterious seeds, you can also shake it with 1 magic seed to get 5 uh, specific mysterious seeds. This will save you a bit of time in shaking but you will also need to spend more time in planting and harvesting special seeds as the magic seed is consumed. When you um, seed breeding magic crop, you can get back like one, two, three magic seeds. But if you seed breeding the mysterious crop, 
you will only get three or four fruits. So from a financial value perspective, you should only harvest the mysterious crops. Instead of harvesting, you can also choose to breed seeds once the crop is matured. The yield of seed breeding is about one to three seeds with the possibility to upgrade the quality of the seeds. For example, if you seed breeding a high quality onion, you may get two high quality onion seeds and one special quality onion seed. This seed quality upgrade can be a good news for some players, but can also be bad if you only want to farm like white grade or high quality grade seeds for self self consumption. Other than the seeds, you may also occasionally get fruits of something from seed breeding, like fruit fruit of the sun, fruit of the nature. The fruit drop rate is not very high. I estimate it is around 5%. If your goal is to get the fruit for alchemy, my suggestion is go for herb gathering or even crop gathering in the NPC's farm, since uh, gathering can reward better fruit drop rates than farming, and the gathering speed is also faster than farming. In addition, gathering is a life skill with mastery. So if your gathering mastery is high, getting fruits from gathering is not difficult. Another drop from seed breeding is some farming byproducts like the plants with rotting roots, unusual fruits, seeds half eaten by a bird, premature fruits and mutant plants. You will need 20 each of two different byproducts for simple cooking. Uh, you can turn them into a dream horse material uh, which is stone tail fodder. It can be sold to the central market at 2.5 million each. Since the amount of farming byproducts is not a lot from you know one farming cycle, and the value of each byproduct is only 62.5k, so it generally won't affect your farming income too much. It may help you to awake your dream horse. However, in my opinion. For Dream Horse Awakening, you still need to buy materials from Central Market or Pay to Win, as you generally will need a large amount of materials. A special mention here that no matter if you are doing harvesting or seed breeding, there is an RNG chance for special events that a mole appear in your farm. Killing the molds can give you some farming byproducts and dream horse materials, especially under farming events occasionally held by the game developer. The mold may drop more items or have a higher spawn rate, but to my experience, the spawn rate of mold is generally like 1% and it won't affect your overall income too much. So we have gone through harvesting and seed breeding till now. A most common farming strategy is harvesting 60% of the crop and seed breeding 40% of the crops to sustain the next farming cycle by yourself. In a 6 to 4 ratio, generally you will reach a balance of your seeds self-supply and avoid market tax if you sell the seeds to the central markets. For liquid markets like onion, pepper, hot pepper, you can farm th three cycles a day. And if you can farm three cycles a day and you will use the farming products, 
uh, to avoid market tax, you are looking at a value around 80 million a day for 100 farming slots, which I think is a good indicator of the profitability of farming. Though um, some farming products can even you know, go higher in face value, but that market liquidity is not as good and you may need to wait for a longer time to sell your farming products or you may find you know, the price just crashed before you can get them sold. If you're going to sell the products to the central market, then your profitability is around 70 million a day because of the tax effects. If you are busy and can only attend two farming cycles a day, then you are looking at around 60 million without market tax or 50 million profits after tax. If you can only attend one farming cycle for uh, farming a day, my suggestion for you is immediately uh, don't go into farming as it is really wasting your opportunities in other activities and worse you off. Even if you can attend three farming cycles a day, for your active time spent in farming at master level farming, you probably are looking somewhere around 140 to 160 million per hour. This is really not much for the active time efficiency now. Some people may tell you that farming gives you a high CP efficiency return, uh, which, is in, which is misleading in my opinion. The farming income generally consists of two parts. One part is income from your CP. For example, if you invest 100 CP into nodes, you get a stable passive income from the nodes. This CP income is generally determined by the best opportunity use of your CP into passive activities in the game. The other part is your active time or active effort in playing the game. You walk to the fence, plant the seeds, harvesting or seed breeding. All of these are your active efforts into the game. This active time income is also determined by the best opportunity use of your active time in a similar hassle or effort like grinding, hunting or gathering, something like that. These two parts are not difficult to ascertain as usually your CP income or active income should be stable in a certain period. 160 million per hour from farming return comparing to your CP and active time value combined is really nothing. And not only to a financial disadvantage from farming, I'll later explain a strategic disadvantage in the video, which drives me out of farming eventually. Now we know how to get fans, how to harvest and seed breeding. So which is the best spot for farming? You may have heard the coastal cliff near Lilia, which is uh, this is where I am standing now. You can see it in the video. It is popular farming spots by many players. Uh, this is a large open field and close to the town. The humidity, temperature, and groundwater supply is also decent. I used to farm here a lot and I never need to water my plants. I just plant it and wait for a few hours, then harvest it. But in my opinion, this spot is only okay if you do farming in an old character. 
because if you auto path to these farming spots from Velia, the auto path will run a long detour for uh, about one or two minutes before you can start farming. Gradually, this will waste your time, but if you anyway need to change to an alt to attend your farms, then this spot is okay. I also just highlight here, farming in an alt character is also not recommended, mainly because this swap between characters still can take a bit of time, around 30 seconds to 1 minute. And if your alt farming level is lower than your main, then you are lost more time value in like longer harvesting time. My suggestion for you is to farm wherever you often pass by or visit naturally as long as it is not in the desert. Though the groundwater supply, temperature and humidity will affect the growth, growing speed of the crops, but I generally don't think it will impact your daily farming cycle, at least for most players. Say, if you can only attend your farm every 7 hours, like after work or after sleep, then it doesn't matter to you if your crop mature in 3 hours or 7 hours. And even if the ground's water supply is not sufficient and the crop yield is not the highest, say, if the spot's convenience only saved you 1 minute active time, if the opportunity cost of your active time is 200 million an hour, the value of one active time saved to you is 3.3 million. So that's 3.3 million for one minute. We assume your special crop is worth 25k each on central markets uh, without tax effects. So one minute's active time equals to 132 special farming products and also giving you convenience and more time in real life. So even if the groundwater supply reduced the crop yield, doesn't matter. Convenience is much important. No need to mention if your opportunity cost is even higher, right? So when you consider farming spots, the golden rule is always convenience. My example for you is farming in Heidel. Uh, I'm using LAN since I do many AFK life skill activities in Heidel, so I often need to refresh my tent buff to keep the life skill EXP buff. So I combined the tent buff and farming together, simply flying over the river to stay out of the town and install my tent, get the tent buff and harvesting the farm. In this case, I literally spend zero time in traveling to the farm, since anyway I need to refresh my tent buff, giving me the best time efficiency. Though I've mentioned a lot that farming is not that good you know, in the video, uh, it doesn't mean it really has no value at all. Now it's time to give you a deeper understanding of the pros and cons of farming from a game strategy point of view. For the pros, the first I want to say is if you follow my advice and get a farming location with zero traveling time, farming can actually give you a competitive, effective money power if your farming slots are not many. The reason is for grinding, gathering, or hunting. In most occasions, 
you will need to travel to the spots to start the activities. If you only grind for a short amount of time, then your money per hour is not only for the grinding time, but has to include your travel time back and forth as well, giving you a lower effective money per hour. This effective money per hour benefits of farming is also connected with the nature of the farming. That farming is a good use for your fragmented time. For example, after an overnight AFK, when I wake up, I only have 10 or 15 minutes to attend to the game, like checking central market, feed workers, consume energy before I got to work. So farming is a good activity for me to use these several minutes with decent money per hour efficiency. These two features, effective money per hour for short periods and effective use of fragmented time are the major pros of farming. Another three small benefits of farming, just a quick mention here, that for sunflower farming, it is more time efficient than sunflower or flower gathering. So if your goal is to get the, the maximum amount of sunflower for cooking in a certain amount of time, you will spend less time in farming, but just need to wait longer than flower gathering. Another is farming has a better energy efficiency than gathering. So if your energy is not much left, before, like before sleep, spending them on the farm can be a good choice. I've heard gathering level will also affect farming energy consumption. For this, I didn't test it. If it is true, you may consider using a high level gathering character to do farming at the same time. The last pro of farming is also mentioned before that um, you can use your worker without a need for node connection. Some guide tells you to use green giant worker for a slow working speed and high stamina. Since I don't value farming too much, my opinion is this doesn't matter. I just like to keep all my worker you know, under artisan level in case I'll need them for something else in the future. Now it comes to the cons of farming. The first one is farming has no mastery. Though farming level will reduce your harvesting time, the benefit of leveling up is not that much. And farming is also difficult to level up, as you can specially um, explain. Even you invested billions in Manox accessories, it cannot help farming a single, right? So this life skill can make you feel less progression and less accomplishment. The second issue of farming is it can last it cannot last for a long time. If you travel a long way to attend your farm just for a few minutes, it really is going to be a pain. So if you're going to be active in the game for a few hours, it is not a good bulk use of your active time. The third issue is you have to stay online. In order to, in order for your crops to grow. Though farming is an active life skill, it is a life skill. Uh, it is an active life skill plus a deferred return. And to get this deferred return, you have to be in the game 
consume your electricity bills, right? <laughs> For some non-AFK players, this already bought them out of farming. The fourth issue is the opposite of the third issue. For long time, AFK players, farming is also not friendly. As I mentioned before, if you can only attend to your farm for one cycle a day, then please forget farming. Another issue of farming was also mentioned before that the farming per money per hour is not good as as an individual life skill. And if you invest the time in leveling up farming, the initial uh, financial return uh, is even worse. Sometimes farming may be necessary to supplement cooking or alchemy as a combined money return to extract high profit margin in cooking or alchemy. But just to my experience, these items are rare as it seems many people, many players are doing farming at the moment. The last and the most strategic issue of farming is for alchemy and processing life skillers. Especially um, also under large scale farming. Alchemy and processing are generally not easy to level up to a high level without abundance support of materials. You will need CPs at least to invest in many timber nodes for tree saps, timber, and other alchemy materials. Unless you do an extensive amount of gathering at the same time, Investing CP in farming will cause you trouble in progression of alchemy and processing. But if you already have a high mastery in gathering, indeed, you really have no need in farming given your money per hour at high gathering mastery is already very decent very much higher than farming. For a game strategy review, for new players, generally they have less CP and, and also with low value nodes and less grinding money power. They have no factory or high level worker. So the CP and active time opportunity cost is low for them. Farming can be a good choice with a higher money return for this period. But if you're going to play long term, investing in nodes to stack materials, timber for processing, sap for alchemy, cooking material nodes, and leveling up your workers naturally, and spend your active time for gathering or grinding will be a better strategy in the long run. For established players around like full pen to Vala, you have decent grinding money per hour around 200 to like 250 mil per hour. Your time investment in farming will no longer be efficient other than your fragmented time. For established life skillers, like hunting gathering may also help cooking better for basic recipes. For end game players, your CP and active time are valuable and should not be wasted in farming. Your node investment will bring in a lot of ingredients for high level recipes but the farming products are mostly for basic recipes and you can simply purchase the intermediary cooking ingredients from the central market 
to cook high level meals for more time efficiency and cooking exp return if you are in life skill and want to advance your life skill exp then node investment is better strategically only some small scale of farming in fragmented time may be useful to stack gradually uh, some materials for cooking or alchemy. For my example, I quit farming and only kept the free Klaus old moon fence, uh, which is a free fence, to casually use my fragmented time in Heidel and my free worker in a disconnected city, Oxry Odrexia, will look after the farm for me. I don't have many times to or just too lazy to attend many cycles of farming every day. Usually I can only get one cycle or maximum two farming cycles a day. Once my grinding buff or uh, you know the life skill buffs is on, I have to keep going to maximize the buff effects and has no time to, uh, to bother with farming. And I'm not interested in leveling up another farming out and swap back and forth, you know, just for little farming money return. Especially the central market nowadays has sufficient crop supply. If I really need something, I usually can just get it directly from central market. My CP is invested in value nodes and alchemy nodes to gradually stack strategic materials in alchemy and processing to boost my next leveling up with game events. Generally, I think farming in 2022 is not very much useful under the current central market conditions on console. It is surprising to me that there are still many players doing farming and supply to the central markets. I generally think this situation will last, will still last for a long time. And if you have watched this video and changed your mind in farming, then congratulations, as now at least you know what you are doing and why you are doing. For game improvement su suggestions for farming, I reckon the developer can explore if farming can allow more categories of Dream Horse material drop and increase the drop rate to give the game really something to get the dream horse naturally instead of relying heavily on the game events like giveaway events or pay to win another improvement can be reducing the difficulty of leveling up in farming by regular harvesting and seed breeding as i think pulling and killing pets are not the purpose or the major activities of farming. The game should give more farming EXP for the major activities instead of the opposite. The previously mentioned Dream Horse material drop and farming level can all be linked to a new farming mastery system to give farming to make farming into a real life skill independent life skill. Giving life skillers a purpose in pursuing the progression in this farming life skill alone. Further, a developer should consider if the game should lower the CP costs for the farming fence, given the existing low financial return in farming in 2022. In addition, Farming as a pure active life skill activity should be included into the guild mission list as an encouragement 
to actively play the game and provide extra income to farmers. The last suggestion is, though there are、um, a farming farming crate trading system, so why don't combine farming with active trading to save both life skills at at one shot at the same time? For example, if you do active trading, you know in the game there is a Trading system called event trading, that a specific node is buying trading items at two hundred percent margin price. The game developer can simply like make a story, saying like Villa Town is running out of food supply, or grain type of farming products or farming crates can be traded in Villa for. Like 500% margin, or a new price for a limited time, or something like a trader NPC needs flowers to impress his lovers, so he will need to buy sunflower trays at a high margin. So this not only sounds reasonable in the game world, but can also price more play methods under the current game system. And explore solutions to save the debt active trading. So this has been a very long video, as I wish to cover the you know, important parts of farming and give you a correct and thorough picture about farming in 2022. If you stay till now, I have my final three useful tips for you. Is about what to farm and what to cook later after farming. If you farm for cooking,、um, consider onion for grilled sausage cooking recipe, as this cooking recipe has an outstanding long EFK time. Hot pepper or、uh, hot pepper for stir stir fried vegetables with decent money per hour in cooking. And potential for further use in Banos Banos meal recipe. Grilled scorpion with high money per hour and relatively high cooking EXP return. Farming sunflower for tea with fine scents with a decent money per hour. And high market demand. All right, this is all for today's video. I spent a lot of effort in making this guide, and hope you've enjoyed it. Please remember to support me by hitting the like and subscribe button, and let me hear your voice down below. I'll see you next time.